One of the core challenges of note taking is the ability to summarize succinctly. Once you read the summary, you can recollect the whole thing. And if it need be, go back into greater detail quickly. The digital note taking tips are aligned to this very principle. This is my second brain in Notion. And every time I add a note in here, it adds to my knowledge vault for quick reference. I've covered the second brain principles in the last video, but not these five tips. So today we will talk about these five tips. If you use a table inside of Notion, you would know that the default property and additional text property columns are both text properties. But did you know that there are differences between these text properties? Let me show you. Let's keep the default property in the knowledge database and add in a sample paragraph explaining the idea. Now let's add in the same text into a new text property called notes. Now let's try and highlight, bold or underline the text in the default property. You will notice that it's not possible to do this. Now let's try doing that in the notes property. You will find that this text property accepts all kinds of formatting. While raw notes are extremely useful for understanding, you will invariably need to compress and condense the information. While you adopt the progressive summarization technique, it would be good to form a set of rules of what has precedence in terms of importance. For example, a bold has precedence over raw text and a highlight has precedence over bold text. The raw notes could be stored inside of the main page in Notion. Not all notes need to go through all the layers and not all information are best stored inside of the main Notion workspace. Larger files are faster retrieved using a file folder system and you can continue to work on them offline even when you do not have a network by using this method. To do that, file paths can be stored inside of the Notion database with the files residing in the individual hard drive. For Windows, the file management system allows for an easy file path management and you can copy the file path directly here. For the Mac, it's a bit more complicated. If you click on the file or the folder, right click and you will notice a menu bar. And on pressing the option key, you will notice it changes to show you the menu bar with the file path. Copy that and paste that into Notion. Unlike Windows, on a Mac, this file path cannot be hyperlinked without a few third-party apps. More on that in a little while. So you press the command and space bar to invoke Spotlight and paste that link. You can immediately see the file or folder that you want to bring up after a quick spotlight search. If you have two external Mac apps called PopClip and Hook, you have just got a much more sophisticated solution. This, however, needs a separate video, which I will do soon. To copy the link of a page, you need to go to the three dots on the right hand side of the page. You will notice immediately that the page has an HTTPS link provided. If you click on the page, it opens up a browser page and shows you the result in a browser, which may not be what you want. By replacing the words HTTPS with Notion, you can redirect Notion to show you the page inside of the Notion app. This is especially useful if you share links amongst your team members frequently. When you create a database, normally you would create tables, calendars, and Kanban boards. The gallery view is one of the most neglected ones, yet it's pretty elegant. Let's say you want a page to be shown as a card. Then by creating a gallery view on each page, should be the one you should look at seriously. If you go into properties, you can change the card size to be small and the card preview to be none. 
to reflect each of the pages like an icon. I find this particularly useful while creating summary cards for Notion tags or topics that I want to access. By embedding these cards with Notion linked databases and filtered specifically for that tag, I can view multiple databases that have that topic. Have you recently noticed any changes to the callout block? Earlier, the callout block was just a simple callout block. You could put a nice icon and type in a reminder or a note related to that page. Now, you can add different blocks to be part of a callout block, including a header, a toggle block, a database, or even a synced block. This makes cross-referencing important information even more powerful and you can simply hide everything under a toggle till you want to reference it. And given that, you can change the background shade and the icon. You can customize this just like a personal wiki. If you are facing specific Notion challenges, let me know in the comments below and I will put out videos on specific tips grouped together by topic. If you are not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.